fellow book lovers. My name's Anna and this is Bluebell and Joe. I'm a mother who is passionate about children's books. My daughter also loves books when she's not flushing them down the toilet. So I'm sure you can see there is a seasonal theme to this video. It is spring and this is actually part two. So if you haven't already seen part one, be sure to check that out and I'll leave a link in the box below. So we're going to start with this absolutely stunning book by Ruth Brown. It's called Ten Seeds. I have quite a few of her books because, well, you'll see why. The storytelling is simple but gorgeous and the illustrations are to die for. Look at this. So here we have a little boy who's planting ten seeds in the ground. So it's a really good uh, way of starting to teach children about what happens with germination and what goes on under the earth. Um, look at those lovely gorgeous worms. And I love how each page has a cross section so you always get what's going on in the ground and then what's happening above. <laughs> so one ant steals a seed and then it counts down nine seeds, one pigeon, thief. And that's how it goes. Every single page counts down and shows an animal stealing the seed for food. But what I love here again, look, you can see this next level of germination with the roots coming out. It's a really good way to teach children, um, you know, what goes on in the garden underneath the soil. And then we're going into shoots territory. And here we have a lovely slimy old slug. You can really sort of get that sense of oozy wetness about him as well. And uh, and we have one mole. It's a really uh, useful tool as well to help children learn how to count down. So look at these green fly. I mean, <laughs> I just, I feel, I just feel like it's these green fly are so real on the page. You know, you expect them to sort of crawl about and move. And we have a ladybird. Anyway, when you think that nothing's going to survive, ah. Oh, one does survive and it is a sunflower and it's magnificent and here you have a lovely bee. So you can talk about pollination, uh, seed germination and then full circle. Um, the plant is now withered and dying and the little boy comes back and saves the seeds again. So I, I really like uh, the sort of the message behind it and I think it's absolutely stunning to look at. So I will be showing more of Ruth Brown's books because I, I'm absolutely in love with all of her stories. So that's that one. Okay, I think let's go to uh, another worm-themed book. Um, now this one I actually, I didn't seek it out. It was one of those that was recommended to me on Amazon and it kept popping up and I thought, well, let's check it out. Um, I'm not 100% sold on it and I'll, I'll tell you why. I might be a bit nitpicky, but you know, hey, this is what I'm doing on YouTube, right? Leaving honest reviews. So it is incredibly informative borderline slightly overwritten I'd say um, you know if I was an editor um, and I was going through this book I would just cut there's a lot of repetition um, I also as much as the pictures are quite enjoyable they're a little bit samey it's unfortunate that worms aren't sort of um, that fun or attractive to look at you know they're sort of the same and they live in brown soil and uh, and more brown and and more brown so you know the color palette gets a little bit repetitive if I'm being really picky and also I don't know what you call this style it sort of feels um, I mean I, I call it kind of cut and paste it, it reminds me of um, yeah you know just cutting out shapes on, on on paper and then sticking it down and then photographing that which I don't usually find as riveting and I think if you're going to do it it's got to be sort of fun colours anyway I'm going back to this page because this is good fun it's talking about worms uh, pooing which uh, yeah what child won't enjoy talking about that um, do you know what I found is since uh, reading this book I actually have been actively seeking out and looking for worm poo or signs of worm poo on the top of the soil so that's been quite fun and I have learnt a lot about worms as I say it's so thorough it's just you know I just wish it wasn't as wordy anyway so I won't show too much more of it you get you get the gist of it if you have a child that's really interested in worms or if you're in the middle of a unit study that's talking about um, the soil and how it's made and how important worms are because let's face it they are they are crucial to uh, to yeah, to our ecosystem um, then this book is fantastic uh, I just suggest that 
it might be a slight hard sell unless your child is is really into worms. There we go. So now let's move on to Jill Barklam and her Brambley Hedge series. So there is a story for each season in the Brambley Hedge series, and I. Oh, the, the level of charm in this book is just next level. Um, it follows the story of uh, a whole group of mice who live in Brambley Hedge, and Brambley Hedge consists of many different types of trees, and um, you know, from the oak to the elm. Um, and they all sort of live in their own homes, but they are also a community. You know, they share a kind of storeroom, which is a tree stump. This is where they store all their food for the winter. So there's a real sense of community. Anyway, this particular story, which is the spring story, focuses on uh, Wilfred, who's a, a little mouse, and it's his birthday. And the whole of the mice of Brambley Hedge decide to get together and throw him a surprise picnic. And they're planning um, all the food that they're going to make. The stories are quite food-oriented, which is just so charming. And it's really cute. Like, all the all the mice just are into baking and cheese making. So it's um, it's just, you can sort of smell the, the blackberry pie pie and the and the um the sort of uh the berry uh, fruity ales that they make it's ever so sweet and every page is just every page is just a delight you know there's something to see uh, there's great action going on as well and uh, the author's really good at describing um the appearance of the mice and all the little clothes that they wear as well. It's a little quite like Beatrix Potter, I suppose, in many ways. So um, eventually, uh, Wilfred's thrown this surprise party that he doesn't really realise is for him until this trunk that he's been carting around, um, they tell him to open it, and he does. And inside, when he thinks everyone's forgotten about his birthday, are all of these toys that only a little boy mouse could love. So from a pea shooter to a whistle, little cuddly toy there, bowling pins, conquer, some sweeties, uh, uh, mouse in the box as opposed to Jack in the box. I mean, it's just so, so cute. And then they all uh, stuffed after the picnic and they fall asleep under the bluebells and uh, primroses. So I don't, I don't really know how more spring-like one can get. Absolutely charming. I have the whole series and I'll be looking to buy other things from Jill Barklam as well. So that's a huge win. Right, now the next book is um, is a bit of a sort of all seasons type of book. Um, it's about the weather, as you can see. Now I think it's a good time in the spring to uh, really kind of enjoy this book because the springtime, the weather's so changeable, we can still get snow, uh, we get wind and rain, and also randomly we can get a, a bit of a hot spell as well. So that's why I really like this book. Um, I also like the fact that uh, you've got the chunkier text and then some smaller text here which is a bit more information as well so it's great fun and then every season so this is hot and sunny and then it shows what you'd wear in hot and sunny weather so you can not only learn about the weather you can learn about um, the appropriate clothing to wear in that weather as well and this kind of thing might help you have less of a battle getting your young child dressed every day um, because they'll understand you know shorts are for summer etc so again, you've got a bit more information here. It's talking about ultraviolet rays and protecting your skin. But if you've got a very, very young child, you can just skip all that and just enjoy the bigger text. And I really like books that do that. I've got another one here to show you that does something similar. And uh, again, you've got always the same picture and things are changing in the garden here, um, in the sky, the leaves on the trees are changing. So here we have autumn, obviously. Your daughter's personal favorite, it's the rain. And pitter patter, pitter patter, and then right at the end, what more do you want than a rainbow to tie it all together? So a really sweet book, obviously aimed at a bit more uh, of a younger age, uh, but we've been enjoying it very much. Right, uh, let's move on to the Bumblebee Queen. This is a very, very sweet, very informative book uh, about the life and journey of a of a sweet bumblebee, and how she goes about uh, creating her own colony and finding a good spot and uh, visiting flowers and, and collecting uh, nectar and just a real feast for the eyes. And this would work so well if you're doing a proper sort of in-depth study on, on bees and pollination. Um, and again, it does actually cover all seasons and the whole life cycle. 
that's not so happy. <laughs> Ignore that page. Well, no, you know, it's important to know that, yeah, the bees have a shelf life, so they don't live that long, the worker bees. Um, yeah, so just a, a really uh, beautifully done, uh, informative book about bees. Okay, just a couple more to show you. Um, sticking with animals, here we have um, all about animal homes. And this is a lifty flappy book, so, you know, who doesn't love that? And um, again, we've got uh, a section on the hive and all sorts of information. I think this is for a, a slightly older child, you know, because the text is quite small, it's quite dense, but then a younger child can still get in there and lift the flaps slash rip them as my daughter loves to do. So we have a, a, a lodge. Again, I didn't know a lot of this information that's presented here, so it's always great to learn yourself as a parent. Um, here we have about a nest, and there's a warren. Here we have a mound, and these fantastic, uh, all these different fantastic animals here. You've got an echidna, and an agama, I didn't even know what an agama was, uh, a giant anteater, so they're all the predators. So yeah, it ticks all the boxes from a scientific perspective. A bit of a casualty there. And I didn't even know this, that a, a fox's den uh, also is called an earth. So, you learn something new. And then at the very last page, you've you've sort of got a bit of a, a task here to try and remember which animal belonged in each different home. So that's kind of nice. A little bit of a quiz. And then here, a very good message is um, help to keep animal homes safe. Find, look and leave. And don't litter, everybody. So, uh, yeah, I really appreciate the kind of... Um, sentiments behind this book and a, a huge respect for nature as well and very attractive and fun. So the last book to talk about is another Diane Aston, Sylvia Long, A Seed is Sleepy. Um, I'm a huge fan of, of these women. Uh, their collaborations are just stunning, as you will see inside. And obviously springtime is just so perfect to talk about seeds and the thing I love about this book, I, I feel so inspired, like look at this, these are different types of seeds. I feel inspired to like sketch these for nature journaling and um, you know, you could just do so many different things. You could trace these, you could even try and hunt some of these. You can start a seed collection with your child or children. I mean, there's so many things that you can do here. Um, so, a seed is sleepy. As usual, the story flow of this book is just so satisfying, you know. Being sleepy talks about how they can be dormant for many, many years. A seed is secretive, and then it will talk about something with that theme as well. Um, and also, it's just great to look at the tropical stuff. I mean, a papaya seed, look at that. And then the humble strawberry we know and love. So I don't really need to, to sing more praise for the illustrations here. As I've said in um, the previous part one to this video, they are, they're so good that they're almost sort of um, should be in a botanical book because they're so scientifically accurate. Um, they don't necessarily have to look pretty, you know, it's about them being detailed. So yeah, you can get a good sense of that. And I am very much looking forward to introducing my own daughter to seeds this spring and planting some out and seeing what fantastic flowers we can, we can grow and some veggies hopefully too. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to purchase any of the books mentioned here, check out the list and the links below. I do receive a small commission for any items purchased, which really supports my channel and helps me bring you more content. So thank you and see you soon.